Uh, thanks for the introduction. My name is Merda and this is Ali. We're going to present TinySDR. Uh, TinySDR is the first uh, SDR platform that, that is tailored to the needs of Internet of Things network. It is very small. It's about like three by five centimeters. Uh, so why do we care about creating a software-defined radio platform for IoT networks? So the the ecosystem, uh, the IoT ecosystem is exciting space, which a number of protocol has been introduced almost every other year. But the problem is that while the, all these rapid advances are happening in the industry, the academic community has been severely constrained to have a high impact here. And the main reasons are first, each of these protocols require a dedicated, inflexible radio chipset to evaluate. And second, uh, most of these pr protocols, they have exclusive solution, which often leaves a little room for protocol modifications. Therefore, the current ecosystem discourages researchers from investigating uh, questions of scaling up an IoT network, or more importantly, taking a systematic approach to build a new protocol from ground up. Ideally, we would like to have a large IoT testbed, which we can run any IoT protocol on Mac layer and physical layer. To answer questions such as how does LoRa would coexist with Sigfox, or uh, how does the new how does the NB IoT would compare to LoRa, or how does a new protocol such as XIoT would compare to previous protocols? To do this, we need a software we need a low power software defined radio. Uh, which can run on battery, uh, and more importantly, supports duty cycle operations such, uh, similar to a real IoT endpoint. In addition, since these devices are located at a uh, large area, we need to be able to push any update in both physical layer and Mac layer uh, across a large campus or even a city with a simple over-the-air software update. To make such a system similar to a real-world deployment, individual network nodes should also have the constraint of a real uh, IoT endpoint. And specifically, these devices should support duty cycling, which means that they need to have an ultra-low power sleep mode. They should be also battery powered, which means that their transmit and receive power consumption should be low. Uh, you should be able to update their physical layer and Mac layer with over-the-air update. And finally, they need to have uh, different, sensor, uh, different interfaces to connect with different sensors. The challenge is that none of the existing software-defined radio platforms actually support any of these requirements. To start with duty cycling, let's look at the sleep power of some of the existing commercial and research uh, SDR platforms. As we can see, they either do not support a sleep mode or their power consumption is more than 300 milliwatts of power, which is 10 times more than, 10,000 times more than what we expect for a real uh, IoT endpoint. This is also true for the power consumption of the radio module during transmit and receive operation. As you can see, uh, the existing SDR platform, they have a high power consumption during transmit and receive mode which is at least four to five times more than what we expect with the, for, a ro for a real IoT endpoint such as LoRa. And finally, over there, update is just not supported by existing platforms. They all require some sort of Ethernet connection or USB connectivity to receive new updates. In this talk, uh, we're going to present TinySDR, which is the first low-power SDR platform supports over-the-air update for physical layer and Mac layer. TinySDR also consumes only 30 microwatts of power during a sleep mode, which is 10,000 times less than the existing platforms. Our platform both works, uh, works both on 900 megahertz frequency and 2.4 gigahertz and supports up to 4 megahertz of bandwidth, which is sufficient to support any uh, low-power IoT protocol. We evaluate our platform with different protocols such as LoRa and Bluetooth beacons. Our results show that we can receive the same sensitivity as uh, existing commercial Bluetooth beacon chips and LoRa chips. 
so we're going to show you two demos here to see that this is not just a paper and it's a real hardware that's actually working. The first one is uh, we have a tiny SDR node with Ali. It's running LoRa protocol. And on my computer, we have a LoRa receiver, which here it shows that we're continuously receiving packets uh, with some RSSI value. And now Ali is going to disconnect the battery. As, I, as you can see, the, the number of packets stops receiving. And the next demo is another tiny SDR node here, which is running Bluetooth beacons. I'm going to connect it to the battery. OK. As you can see, it's light, it lights up. And here we have a Samsung Galaxy phone that receives BLE beacons. And if you go through the BLE, it starts receiving packets. And it has some messaging, which is, which, is a tiny, which is a URL to tiny SDR website. OK, so at this point, I will hand it over to Ali, and he will go over the contributions. Let's look at the design of the TinySDR hardware platform. We will go over three main design considerations, physical layer design, Mac layer design, and over-the-air update. Let's start with the physical layer. The I.O. requirements to support even 4 MHz of bandwidth can be quite large. For example, say we have 32 bits for each IQ, IQ pair. The system must support, must support at least 128 megabit per second of I.O. data rate. In addition, we need to have real-time processing of the data at a similar rate so that we can support real-time modulation and, de and demodulation for different protocols. Finally, all of these operations should be done at a low power so that we can run on a small battery for a long time. We use a low power refugee to support these I.O. and processing capabilities. We still need to make a decision whether to, whether to use a low power flash-based FPGA or an SRAM-based one. The first, requirement for, the first requirement for the FPGA is supporting a sleep mode so that we can conserve power. Some flash-based FPGA come with a built-in sleep mode, uh, while SRAM-based FPGA do not, do not support it and needs to be completely shut off. As a result, the boot time to wake up a SRAM flash-based FPGA is, around, is as low as 4 to 5 milliseconds. However, that of an SRAM-based one is around 20 milliseconds. Since every time it goes to sleep and wakes up, it needs to read the whole framework from, from an ex external flash and reprogram itself. 20 milliseconds is still acceptable for IoT protocols since they only need hundreds of milliseconds of wake up time. The next consideration is cost. At these low powers, flash-based FPGAs that can support our requirements are more than $40. However, a SRAM-based FPGA can, be as low, can cost just 5 to $6. Therefore, we use an SRAM-based FPGA from Lattice Semiconductor. We operate the FPGA at, 60 more, at 64 megahertz to support both real-time processing and I.O. communication to the radio. The FPGA has enough resources despite being low power. In fact, LoRa modulation and demodulation takes only 4% and 11% of the FPGA resources, which re leaves enough room for other applications if you want to implement it on the FPGA. Now let's look at how we can design the hardware to support IoT Mac protocols. A naive solution is to use FPGA for Mac layer. This is what people see in prior SCR designs. However, using FPGA for Mac layer results in uh, energy waste. Let's understand why. Here's an example of LoRa Mac layer. As you can see, the end device sends a packet to the base station and goes to sleep for a duration of one second. After that, it wakes up and receives a message from the base station. Since SRAM-based FPGAs do not support sleep mode, the, 
they would they would they would uh, waste huge amount of energy. In this case, for our case, is around 127 millijoule. To prevent this energy waste, we use a microcontroller to implement MAC layer. Note that this is different from prior SCR designs. But it actually makes sense for IoT protocols since it allows us to achieve energy efficient MAC layer implementation. This is because our microcontroller consumes only two microwatt in a sleep mode, which is 10,000 times lower than FPGA power consumption uh, in normal operation. Moreover, this provides a big advantage in terms of programmability. If you are a Mac layer researcher, you don't need to learn FPGA programming. You can just program the microcontroller and evaluate your protocol. Now that we have looked at the Mac layer and physical layer, let's see how we enable over the air programming. Remember, we have shown our ideal network testbed. In an ideal IoT testbed, we, we would like to be able to update firmware at I, uh, update firmware of the IoT nodes. We want to be able to send updates from an access point to nodes across the campus or even a city to change the wireless protocol, for example, from LoRa to Sigfox. To achieve this over-the-air programming, we use a dedicated backbone radio, which is independent from our IQ radio. And the reason for that is we want to be able to support the fail-safe mode for cases when the physical layer update on the FPGA or MAC layer update on the microcontroller goes wrong. We use a LoRa radio for backbone support, since we want to support long ranges of kilometers, and also we want to do the over-the-air update at low power. The challenge is that the, micro the FPGA and microcontroller firmware can be pretty large. For example, FPGA firmware is around 570 kilobyte. And, and assuming that we are updating the, firm updating the node at a rate of 5 kilobit per second, it would take 14 minutes to update a node which is simply too long. Our solution is that first we divide the firmware into chunks. Afterwards, we will compress each chunk. And then we will, se we will send each compressed chunk from the access point to the tiny SCR node. The microcontroller on the tiny SCR node will decompress each chunk and, sa and save it in the flash. We continue this process all until we send all of the compressed chunks to the tiny SCR node and save the whole on compressed firmware in the flash. Afterwards, the microcontroller sends a signal to the FPGA and the FPGA will, re will reprogram it itself from the flash. To evaluate our over-the-air update system, we deploy a testbed of an access point and 20 tiny SCR devices across an area of 400 by 800 meters in University of Washington campus. We measure the update time for each device. Here is the result of our evaluation. We can update the FPGA with LoRa firmware on the average of 150 seconds and with, BLE, with Bluetooth firmware with the average of 59 seconds. This means we can update FPGA with LoRa firmware 2100 times and with Bluetooth firmware 5600 times using a 1000 milliamp hour lithium battery. To summarize, here is the whole tiny SR architecture. The first sus subsystem is physical layer subsystem, which has FPGA and IQ radio. The IQ radio supports both no 2.4 gigahertz frequencies and 900 megahertz frequencies. We also have a microcontroller, which supports MAC layer and sensor interfaces. We have over-the-air programming, which has LoRa radio chip, a controller as part of the microcontroller, and external flash memory. We also designed a power management sus subsystem that we are using to achieve 30 microwatt of sleep power. You can find the details of the power management system in the paper. To conclude, we present a tiny SCR, the first low power SCR platform that supports over the air update. It has very low sleep power and has all the features that we talked about. What we want to talk about next is our plan to, be, to make this platform available. We did a survey with different researchers at the University of Washington and people in, in the industry who use, who use software defined radio. They liked the fact that uh, tiny SCR is low power and battery operated. However, they asked for two additional requirements. They want, they want tiny SCR to be GUNO radio compatible so that they can work with it easily. And also, they want it to be uh, inexpensive so that they can 
so that they can teach big classes without spending too much money. To enable these requirements, we have been working on TinySCR 2.0. This is the prototype that we already built. It's compatible with GUNO Radio, and the goal is to connect and run it on Raspberry Pi. We anticipate the price to be between $30 to $60. This is great because uh, using this device, we can transform how we are teaching wireless communication in universities across the world. The reason is that now, for $1,000, we can have 15 to 30 of SDRs and one for each student to use. To meet this price target, however, we need to make bulk orders of around 1,000 units. So if you want to make this platform happen, con contact us at this uh, link. Thanks a lot, and happy to answer questions. Thanks. That's a great job. Uh, my question is, uh, how to active a tiny SIDR from sleep mode? So the microcontroller has a timer. And, so the, and the microcontroller is like a central brain of the system. And everything is coded on the microcontroller. It has a timer. When it, when it ticks, it wakes up. It con communicates with the access point, And that's it. So do you mean the processor determines the tiny SDR when to Active. Yes, the microcontroller on the tiny SCR node. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, uh, Akshay Gadre from Carnegie Mellon. Great work. Uh, so one problem with over-the-air updates in the LoRa and Sigfox context is when does the clients know the over-the-air update is going to come? And uh, most of the times what they do is these are only for the high power devices which are going to be always on receive and they can get these updates. So do you have uh, any idea on how, how you are going to plan to use the over the air updates and not lose the receive power? Yeah. So currently on the microcontroller we have nice. preset timers okay. which wakes, at, wakes up at a specific time and mm -hmm. see if it has any update. Mm -hmm. If it receives any message it will it will schedule itself for another time. But uh, this is just one solution. Potentially, you can, because this is a platform, you can yeah, define different kinds of you know, net network configuration and different networks, different kinds of updating uh, policies to do this. OK, uh, thanks. Yeah. All right, let's thank the speaker. <laughs> <laughs>